Internal Revenue Service IRS Tax News. Security Summit. Identity Protection PIN pins provide an important defense against tax-related identity theft. The Security Summit. Like the new Justice League, except headed by Superman's son, who doesn't use his superpowers anymore, believe in the real power in the world to fight the big problems like global warming and tax-related identity theft is by joining protesters with picket signs. Superman's son, mind you, who I presume could do just about anything to fix the problem with a picket sign. I mean, could you imagine Superman with a picket sign and a bunch of protesters? I don't think so. I mean, honestly, you, you know what Superman would have done about the whole global warming thing? He would have just like gone to the North Pole and just blowing on some glaciers with his super cool breath, making more ice. Problem solved. And then the protesters could go ahead and just burn those picket signs without any worries about it eating up the earth or anything. Whatever. I got a little off track. First an attempt at a joke. They just keep hitting it. They just keep hitting the same line. It's the oil companies and Putin's price hike. I mean, it's like a crazy person hitting a pile of dust with a stick over and over again. Bystanders asking, what are they doing to hit the ground with that stick over and over like that? What are you doing? Well, apparently they're beating a horse. AJ, I think you're beating a dead. Really, it just looks like a pile of dust. All we are is dust in the wind, dude. Well, it used to be a horse. And it's like, well, how long have they been beating that horse? The poor thing must have died back in the time of Cain, Abel, and young Biden. IR 2022-140, July 19th, 2022, Washington. The Security Summit partners today encourage tax professionals to increase their efforts to inform clients about the IRS Identity Protection PIN opt-in program to help protect people against tax-related identity theft. The IPPIN, otherwise known as the IPPIN, the IPPIN, serves a critical defense against identity thieves. So let me give you a quick recap on kind of the history as I understand it of the IPPIN. Uh, this was used basically before when people had their identity stolen, someone filed a fraudulent tax return because they had the social security number and other information in order to do so. And then the IRS had to fix it. And what they would then do to stop future uh, identity theft and filing fraudulent tax returns is issue an IPPIN, which you could think of as kind of like a second social security number, an identification number to stop people from being able to file a fraudulent tax return. They basically expanded that program now is my understanding of it so that you can opt in to get an IPPIN before someone actually steals your identity. And you would think, uh, given the fact that the social security numbers these days are never changed and we're in the world of the internet that it's quite likely that you know people's social security numbers could be compromised and so on and so it and now we have a situation where the lower income tax returns are more valuable to identity thieves because there's a lot of these kind of like welfare or benefit programs in them meaning if you have a lower income you can still get a refund through the refundable credits things like child tax credit and earned income tax credits and so on, making the demand for thieves to steal identity in order to file fraudulent returns go up. So now we're gonna need to have more vigilant defense against that. And one of those ways is possibly to get an IPPIN, which is kind of like a second social security number just for your tax related stuff that would change, I believe on a yearly basis, making it more difficult for people to steal, but a little bit more burdensome than just remembering the one social security number since the time we were two uh, and it never changes. And then we got to give it to everybody that we do business with and so on and so forth and hope that it doesn't get spread out on the internet now that we have this kind of internet viral thing, which is kind of a vain hope, it seems to me, for a lot of time. But in any case, the IRA's state tax agencies and the nation's tax industry working together as the Security Summit. There's a link to that here. I uh, need assistance from tax professionals to let their clients know that IPPINs are now available to anyone who can verify their identity. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm assisting the Security Summit 
to let them let people know about th that you should get an IPPIN because there's bad guys out there trying to steal stuff from you. So sharing information about the IPPIN opt-in program is the first in a five-part weekly summer series sponsored by the Summit Partners to highlight critical steps tax professionals can take to protect client data and their businesses. Next, we're going to go out with picket signs on the next one. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. So the series is an effort to urge tax professionals to intensify efforts to secure their systems and protect client data during the summer and throughout the year. So protect yourself, people. That's what we're telling you. There's bad guys. These alerts will be issued each Tuesday for five weeks to coincide with the IRS National Tax Forum, which helps educate tax professionals on security and other important topics. Quote, these identity protection numbers provide an extra layer of safety to protect people against tax related fraud tied to using stolen personal information, end quote, said IRS Commissioner Chuck Reddick. Quote, following work by the IRS, the IPPIN program is now available to anyone who can verify their identity. We urge tax professionals to encourage their clients to protect themselves through the IPPIN program. So if you're a tax professional, you might want to do that because that could of course be beneficial for you as well. The IRS is basically saying, it looks to us, it seems to me they're saying, it looks to us like more people are vulnerable. There's more demand for stealing identity try to protect your clients. That's be good for tax professionals, of course, too, because you don't want to have to go through the pain of the process of dealing with someone who's had a fraudulent tax return filed, and then you try to file it. And then, you know, it's a problem and problem. And so we tried to uh, preemptively stop that. The Electronic Tax Administration Advisory Committee, otherwise known as the ETAAC, which you would think would be like the Extraterrestrial uh, Alcoholic Anonymous Committee or something by now, but no, it's the Electronic Tax Administration Advisory Committee, the ETAAC, last month highlighted the importance of the IPPIN to taxpayers and tax professionals. Quote, the IPPIN is the number one security tool currently available to taxpayers from the IRS, end quote. The independent advisory group said in its annual report to Congress, quote, this tool is the key to making it more difficult for criminals to file false tax returns in, this, in the name of the taxpayer. In our view, the benefits of increased IPPIN use are many, end quote. The ETAAC, the, I just keep on picturing ET from the, that old movie, but he's drunk and an alcoholic. And not, but any, that's not what it stands for. That's not what it stands for. The ETAAC also recommended the IRS continue to highlight and promote the IPPIN, the IPPIN, through a public awareness effort. The IRS will be taking steps to do that, including building off awareness of special items, including publication 5367. That's the IPPIN opt-in program for taxpayers. There's a link to that here. It's in English and Spanish so that tax professionals could print and share the IPPIN information with clients. So you got this kind of thing that you can send out in your newsletter about the IPPIN, encouraging people to sign up for it, possibly. There are also special posters available in English and Spanish. So they got posters. That's how we're, we're going to get this. We're going to save the world with posters. So for security reasons, tax professionals cannot obtain an IPPIN on behalf of clients. So you can't do it yourself. They're going to say, why don't you get it for me? Then you can do it. That's fine. You can say no because this is your thing. It's your, it's like your social security number. You have to do it client. Okay. I'm sorry. This is one thing that, you know, you have to do yourself. Taxpayers must obtain their own IPPIN. Summit partners urge taxpayers and tax professionals to be careful and protect the IPPIN from identity thieves. Taxpayers should share their IPPIN only with their trusted tax pro provider. Tax professionals should never store clients' IPPINs on computer systems. Also, the IRS will never call, email, or text either taxpayers or tax preparers to request the IPPIN. So it's kind of like a social security number. Don't give it away to everybody. Stop posting it on social media. Stop tweeting your social your social security number out. That's not a good idea. Or the IPPIN people, you know, that's <laughs> just common sense. In any case, 
Tax professionals who experience a data theft can assist clients by urging them to quickly obtain an IPPIN. Even if a theft already has filed a fraudulent return, the IPPIN would still offer protection for later years and prevent taxpayers from being repeat victims of tax-related identity theft. So here are a few things taxpayers should know about the IPPIN, the IP pin. It's a six digit number known only to the taxpayer and the IRS. So it's like only a who's who knows knows kind of thing. You and the IRS have this secret secret that everybody else wants to know, but no, you're not gonna tell them. So the opt-in program is voluntary, meaning you gotta, you gotta take the first step to get in this secret club between you and the IRS. The IP pin, the IPPIN, should be entered into the electronic tax return when prompted by the software product or into a paper return next to the signature line. So when you file the tax return, you're gonna have to put the IPPIN like a number, like a second social security number, because that's the point. You need that in order to file the tax return now. So the IPPIN is valid for one calendar year. Taxpayers must obtain a new IPPIN each year. So hopefully that is an easy process, but that would clearly heighten the level of security if you changed your IPPIN. So even if you posted tweets about what your IPPIN and put it on your face, on your face account, your face, the book of faces, then even if, even if that happened, then you can change it. So even that won't stop you from pushing forward. So only taxpayers who can verify their identities may obtain an IPPIN. So they gotta know who you are, of course, to give you an IPPIN because it's an identity thing. So it, like, if they gave it to someone and they couldn't confirm the identity, you would think it'd be point. Anyway, IPPIN users should never share their number with anyone but the IRS and their trusted tax preparer or provider. The IRS will never call, email, or text to request for the IPPIN. To obtain an IPPIN, the best option is to get an IPPIN. There's a link to that here. It's on the IRS online tool. Taxpayers must validate their identities through uh, secure access authentication. So I don't think they're asking for your face identification anymore like they were to sign into an account because I think they were trying to rule the world for a while with like the facial recognition and then they're going to put cameras and the whole world and everybody's like, you know they got the facial thing but i don't think they're going that far anymore so i think you could get authentication like normal ways like your bank does and stuff without that maniacal world control you know from the irs thing so to access the tool and their IPPIN, the IP, the IP pin before attempt before attempting this rigorous process see secure access how to register for certain online self-help tools there's a link to that here if taxpayers are unable to validate their identity online and if their income is below seventy three thousand dollars for individuals or below one hundred forty six thousand for married couples they may file form 15227 application for an identity protection personal identification number there's a link to that here the irs will call the telephone number provided on form 15227 to validate their identity so if they do try to do the they go to the facial recognition and you're like wait a second the iris is trying to track everyone and follow you know do, do crazy weird stuff again then maybe you maybe you go to the paper form here and try it that way where they're going to confirm with a phone number possibly if your income is below the threshold to be able to do so however for security reasons the irs will assign an IPPIN and ip pin for the next filing season the ip pin cannot be used for the current filing season taxpayers who cannot validate their identities online or on the phone with the irs employee after submitting a form 15227 or who are ineligible to file a form 15227 may call the irs to make an appointment at a taxpayer assistance center so step one try to file online step two see if you can file the form 15227 if you can't do it online and you can try it that way but if you can't do that or that that doesn't work for whatever reason you can actually talk to an irs agent i know it's crazy they you could they're real i've never seen one in the last five years but yeah apparently you might be able to actually locate one and then they can check your identity with the old-fashioned ID card like you're going into a bar or something like that. Can't I just go to the local bouncer and they tell they check the identity? They're better at it than you guys are. In any case, 
So they will need to bring one picture identification document and another identification document to prove their identity. Once verified, the taxpayer will receive an IPIN and IPPIN via U.S. Postal Service within three weeks. The IPIN, IPPIN process for confirmed victims of identity theft remains unchanged. So if you've already been a victim, meaning <laughs> it like, sounds like you've been like a, someone shot you or something, but no, that means something... Someone stole your identity and filed a fraudulent tax return victimizing you from the identity theft thing. So it's not like the worst victimization you can have aff afflicting you, but it could be problematic. And uh, that, and then you, you file for the IPPIN in that case, but you could do it preemptively now. That's the new thing. So these victims will automatically receive an IPIN, IPPIN. Additional resources, tax professionals also can get help with security recommendations by reviewing the recently revised IRS publication 4557 Safeguarding Taxpayer Data. There's a link to that here. And Small Business Information Security, the fundamentals. There's a link to that here by the National Institute of Standards and Technology technology the irs identity theft central page there's a link to that here for tax pros individuals and businesses have important details as well publication 5293 data security resource guide for tax professionals there's a link to that here provides a, com a compilation of data theft information available on irs.gov 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 also, taxpayers should stay connected to the IRS through subscriptions to e-news for tax professionals and social media. Make sure to follow the, the IRS's socials. You don't want to miss one single tweet. I don't, I don't, do, I don't follow their tweets. <laughs> but I do look at their news, which is right here. This is what I'm following right here. That's what I do. So for more information, you can go to irs.gov, irs.gov and uh, there's also links to all this stuff here and there'll be a link to this in the description.